کوسٹ بنا گڈ آفٹرنون آج کے ایمیننٹ اسپیکر ریسپیکٹڈ ڈاکٹر حنیف قریشی جی ہمارے بیچ پدھار چکے ہیں سر آپ کا بہت بہت سواگت ہے सर नमस्कार नमस्कार सर सर अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ प्लीज अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ आर नॉट अलाउंग यू या आई कुड नॉट अनम्यूट माय सेल्फ बिकॉज़ द एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर प्रिविलेजेस वर विद यू नाउ नाउ यू आर ऑडिबल सर आई 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 एम सॉरी सर आई एम सॉरी थैंक यू नाउ यू आर ऑडिबल यस सर विद योर परमिशन कैन वी स्टार्ट द सेशन यस लेट अस स्टार्ट यस थैंक यू चंचल मैडम स्टार्ट द सेशन जी थैंक यू सर I, Chanchal Bhardwaj, welcome respected eminent speaker of today's session, Dr. Hanif Qureshi ji, on behalf of our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, and SVSC family. Dr. Qureshi ji is an administrator within soul of an academician. He is an IPS officer with experience of policing, comprising criminal investigations, traffic management, intelligence operations, and handling law and order situations. After M.Tech in Information and Technology, Sir has done MBA and doctorate in Criminal Justice from USM. Sir is an inspiring example of caring and caring profession along with passion for the development of the nation. Presently, he is heading as a secretary, New and Renewable Energy Department, Haryana, and Inspector General of Police, for IRB and RTC. He is also contributing as a visiting professor at Gurgaon University and Jamia Hamdard University and guiding the youth as a part of his passion for academia. His passion for research is evident through more than 100 research publications, books, and book reviews. His article on police universities published in Deccan Harar to get best of technology, Indian police must ditch the silos published in Economic Times and research with police have been highly liked and praised by the readers. Sir has been also honored with police medal for his extraordinary services by the government of India on the eve of Republic Day 2020-21. Sir, it is requested to please share your leadership experiences with our participants across the nation. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Chanchal. And uh, thank you, Professor Rishipal, for giving me this opportunity to share my views and to share such a, uh, my thoughts with such an uh, August gathering. Uh, I understand the seminar uh, is about the challenges of administration, uh, particularly in the higher education institutes of the country. Uh, I do not know whether I am qualified to address these challenges, but what I will only do is to, uh, you know, share some of my uh, insights and my experiences along uh, which I have had during my journey. So uh, my journey through academics and through uh, the civil services has not been very typical of a typical civil servant. I have gone left and right here and there. So I will just give you a brief uh, about my journey. I started with my B.Tech in electrical engineering from Jamia Milia. And then I did my M.Tech in information technology. Uh, then I came into the Indian police service in the 1996 batch and I was allotted the Haryana cadre. Uh, in Haryana, I have served as a SSP in about seven districts. And then I was the IGP of Karnal Range, IG of Isar Range, Commissioner of Police, Faridabad. Uh, and presently, I am the Secretary of Renewable Energy Department. Uh, also, I am the Director General of Hareda, which is a state PSU, you can call it, uh, Haryana Renewable Energy Development Agency. Uh, where we, as the Secretary of the Renewable Energy Department, uh, we are responsible for making policies, uh, making uh, drafting acts, 
and promote promoting a framework where the development of renewable energy and energy conservation is promoted and as the director general of this agency hareda uh, there we uh, have the implementation role so how actual projects are implemented in the ground uh, these projects uh, since it is renewable energy they are mostly on solar energy but we also have micro hydel biomass uh, haryana does not have a wind energy potential but we have uh, waste to energy through garbage and uh, also through the paddy straw which you would have heard recently after the pollution incidents so we are promoting uh, the use of these renewable resources uh as i started with my masters in technology then you know i went on to do a number of masters degrees in fact uh, i've done six masters degrees and the unique thing is that i have done them from all different universities no two degrees are from the same university so in that sense i have a fairly good idea of the ecosystem which obtains in many universities uh, five of these were from india and one uh, mba and phd i did from university of cincinnati in the united states where i stayed for 3 uh, years and uh, completed my studies there so i have a good understanding of how and uh, when i was in the united states uh, my children they were studying in school there so right from school to college to university i had a uh, first hand experience so let me share with you that uh, the first thing which comes to my mind about higher education is that you know when you go out of india and then you meet people there and they talk about the indian education system so when we went to the us what i heard in the us in my university particularly was that indians are very good in mathematics they are very good in science uh, even in school uh, i heard that my children you know they used to talk to their friends and everybody there said that the indian students in classes 6 to 12 they usually top in uh, maths and science related subjects but in the english and the languages it was the uh, local students the american students who were very good there so this is uh, what we commonly hear now it is clear that india has as you know one of the highest technical manpower in the world we have a large number of technical manpower we have technical prowess but unfortunately our technical manpower is somehow in the lower and the middle levels a large number of indians are working in the united states and in europe in a lot of technical companies but the bulk of them are in lower and middle level positions they are not in the senior management positions yes recently you would have heard about a lot of indian ceos heading these companies like google microsoft satya nadella sundar pichai uh, indra noi so these are a number of examples where indians have done exceedingly well uh, in top positions but i would say that these examples are can be counted on fingers but if you look at the vast majority of indians they are working in those levels now that is not to say that indian education system is you know only producing low and middle level uh, workers but it is just to highlight that perhaps we need to reorient ourselves we need to it is not that the western system is very good and we need to adopt those they also have lot of uh, problems and we have lot of strengths so one of the strengths which india system has is that if you talk to a undergrad student in the united states you know he is not able he or she is not able to do calculations they need calculator for everything but here we can do calculations in our, in our mind we are very good with that and they struggle with it indians in general do not struggle with it. so that's a plus point which we have our before coming on to some of the suggestions which i have in my mind i'll just share with you that if you look at the amount or the volume or the quantity of india's education system 
it is humongous it is just next to united states and china we have seen a tremendous increase in the number of higher education institutions and that is a good thing because the enrollment goes up and the pool from which you can draw excellence that also goes up and another good thing which has happened is that the private sector has also come in so we have about 60% of our institutions which are uh, owned and run by the private sector but in spite of this rapid rise and participation of private sector we do not see many indian universities in the top 100 in fact if you look at the times ranking or the us rankings you won't find indian universities in the top 100 of course in subject specific areas they can be but overall we do not have uh, many universities not even one university even the iits are placed in 100 to 200 around 150 160 170 bracket so higher education there is definitely something uh, where uh, government is paying a lot of attention new education policy is there but uh, we need to do something more there let me give you one example and that example is drawn from research if you look at these rankings of the universities you will find that uh, a lot of emphasis is placed upon research uh, when uh, ranking universities now in india the general perception is that only phd students are supposed to do research and masters degree students probably they'll do, they'll do just a minor project and some bachelor's degrees also do minor projects like in btech there is a, a project is there but as a matter of fact as a matter of routine research projects are not encouraged in school and college largely in our higher education institutions therefore when the student goes to phd he has to learn the basics research requires certain basic things so for instance data analysis if you look at the world's top journals you will find that they are very data intensive a lot of data is there and then data analytic tools are there so linear regression is a very simple technique and it is very commonly used since the 1990s my phd is in criminology so i write mostly on criminology and sociology late 80s and then early 90s and on regression has been used in most american journals and european journals so of course now they have gone to hierarchical linear modeling hlm methods are there logistic regression is there structural equation modeling is there there are many such techniques which are used but if you look at indian journals you will find very few journals where such kind of data analysis is there we do not have primary data we are drawing from secondary data and that also most of our articles are qualitative they are not quantitative but this does not mean that qualitative data is not good qualitative data is also very good but how many of our journals use the tools to analyze qualitative data how many of our journals have algorithms which can do content analysis how many uh, papers have you seen which are using these tools which can extract information from qualitative qualitative data they are not there so our qualitative is different from the qualitative as used and understood by the western journals and that is why the western journals are far ahead in indexing and ranking so when you i was delivering the point that when you look at the quality of research you must have the tools without tools you can't do anything you know so there are tools for research tools for data analysis so the important tools are statistics statistical tools are there they are used in all social sciences they are used in computer science data science is used across disciplines uh, spss is a popular uh, program which is used Uh, unfortunately i have visited uh, many universities in ncr and around and i found that spss is not available there if it is available very old versions are available spss 15 16 is available 
whereas now i think 28 29 version is out of spss we are still using the old rules because our universities are not investing in the latest versions of the software and whereas in the us where i was there in the university of cincinnati these tools were all available free of cost to the students to the current students which are there now it is not that it is available only to phd students any student can do so bachelors also bachelors masters degree also all the students can do it so instead of only focusing on making new buildings making new uh, hardware which requires massive investments we should also think about investing in soft resources investing in skills data skills <coughs> and these skills can be used not only by phd students but by bachelor's and master's degree students also and also by schools so if in schools you know you have some interested students you will have at least a if not a full understanding a familiarity and by the time they come to bachelor's degree they would know that these are the basic techniques which are used so in the united states if you go for a phd you have to do the course work before that and don't uh, i don't want to start on that i don't want to make a comparison between course work course work uh, which we do in our higher education institutions is more of a formality there are a couple of courses but uh, we do not have the rigorous course work of 2 to 3 years which you must do in the us before you can embark on any kind of research and that includes a tools a couple of tools classes and a couple of research design classes so in the tools classes you must write <coughs> you must write the uh, uh, tools which may be qualitative tools quantitative tools so couple of tools you must know uh, you know you have to pass the those tools courses and then you must use those tools to analyze publicly available data and uh, write a couple of papers so that you know you are familiar with the tools and how they work so that culture must come Uh, i can so i can see one uh, mr uh, day has remarked that most of the schools of border area do not have electricity yes that is true uh, but you know we have to focus on what we have glass aadha bhara bhi hai aadha khali bhi hai but uh, what we have we must make the best use of that and uh, i am the secretary of renewable energy department and in our state in haryana at least i think it must be true in most of the states we are providing solar rooftops to all the schools to all the hospitals all the chcs and phcs with batteries that is the project which we are doing in haryana most of it is covered and uh, you know uh, yeah i know some of the states tripura you have mentioned uh, the border states or the, some of the states even in uh, advanced states some of the areas may not have uh, adequate infrastructure but what we are discussing here is that what can be done by the administrators by the senior faculty of higher education institutions which can foster the culture of research if ramanujan had all the tools available to worldwide researchers he you know most of his time he was discovering new theorems thinking that these are new theorem but they had already been the research had already been done in the west so he discovered when he went to the united kingdom he discovered ki ye sab to pehle hi hai it is already there so unless we have uh, we know what has been done in the other parts of the world then we will be no need of reinventing the wheel let me give you one example of databases what tremendous power databases have so when we went to the university of cincinnati there was a class uh, on how to use library resources so in the class they told us okay these are the this is a library and physical infrastructure is there and now come to the databases so every subject for instance we were interested in criminology and sociology there are more than a dozen databases of criminology and uh, sociology and the journals and articles which are published they are in those databases 
Now, how to access those databases is the question. You cannot simply Google and reach those databases. You must know what are the databases and then you must know where are they located and then you have to go there. Sometimes they require registration and you can download the articles, but sometimes they are paid databases. So you have to buy a subscription. They are not available free of cost. If you, you know, Google my articles, just try Hanif Qureshi and articles in police or criminology, most of the articles which are published in the Indian journals, they are available free of cost. But the articles which are published in the uh, UK journals or American journals, they are not available free of cost. They are behind a paywall. So you can buy an article or you have to buy the whole journal. So there are different pricing for that. Now universities, that's where the administration of higher educational institutions comes into the picture. If you buy these databases and make them available to your students, then only the students will know what is happening in their area. And then they can address the gaps in knowledge and they can plan their own research. That what research should I do now? They can look at highly indexed journals. Which are the highly indexed journals? And what kind of articles are they publishing? What kind of tools are they using? What kind of data analysis are they doing? What kind of references they are using? Otherwise, if you Google it, you'll only get the abstract. You'll not get the whole article. So being administrators of higher education institutions, you must promote this atmosphere of openness and transparency, where the things are laid before the students. Also, there is an issue of plagiarism. Yes, we are aware about the issue and we try to check plagiarism. But you know, let me tell you how we did it there when I submitted my PhD thesis and also other papers. So whatever paper you write for the university has to be submitted through a software. You cannot give it by hand or you cannot email it, right? So there is a software. We use a software called SafeAssign. We have to upload it there. And all the universities are linked together and the papers which you submit, they are matched against all those uh, papers which have already been submitted, all the books, all the journals, it is already there. And then you get a safe assign score. So the safe assign score, the right from first year of bachelor's degrees, students are very familiar about what is plagiarism, how to avoid plagiarism, reports of plagiarism. They have seen the sample reports. All this is a very common knowledge. And therefore, no student or very few students, these, you know, some bad apples are everywhere. So they know what is plagiarism, what is not. But we do not have a proper understanding of plagiarism. We do not have an understanding of how to check, how to structure the reports. You'll find some plagiarism tools available on the net. So, uh, Ref, Bib, and others are there, but those are only very basic tools. What higher education institutions need is a very thorough and a comprehensive tool. So that is one area where there is no political, political interference, doesn't require too much enough effort, doesn't require big changes in policies. It is only up to the senior faculty to just use the tools. Of course, you'll have to purchase these tools, but these are not very costly. So this we must inculcate not only in our students, but also amongst the faculty. That also we must do. Also, I think one of the issues uh, in India which we have is over-centralization. So there is too much power concentrated in the top officials, like the vice chancellor, pro-vice chancellor, head of departments, deans. A lot of power is concentrated there. And the academic freedom is limited. So that is an issue with, as the combined body of uh, senior administrators, we have to address this issue. If you uh, look at, uh, for instance, uh, the courses which are taught in the United States, now what is the syllabus of the course? What is the reference book to be used? 
that syllabus and reference book is not prescribed by the college it is left to the individual professor to select what material should be taught and also to frame the question paper and also to give the reading list so one year a paper may have a different reading list next year it may have a different reading list so that much freedom academic freedom to individual professors is there of course it is expected that you know you cannot just sway out and go into the non core areas maybe little bit you can go but not beyond the point so that is a freedom which we have to learn to live with to respect that freedom and to work out according to that i taught for 2 years in the university of cincinnati i was teaching criminology and introduction to policing these two subjects i taught for 2 years and i made my own reading list my i made my own syllabus my own powerpoints and i designed the uh, question papers and not only the question papers you can design the format of questions you like so some professors would have a group discussion some would have a lecturet some would have uh, objective type questions some would have uh, three monthly six monthly and a final some would have only finals so all kinds of uh, permutations and combinations were permitted by the college of course you have to keep the college informed of it Uh, but then that kind of a freedom is available and that brings out the genius in the teaching faculty you are teaching there you know your subject inside out how to test the students at whether they have understood or not that is only you know the best and it is not only the matter of testing whether students know or not it is also a matter of using the techniques which are learned in your class to solve problems which are there outside in the world particularly in professional courses like mba or uh, management or engineering or even even other courses of social work and not of other courses applications of what is taught in the class and how it can solve the real world problem that's a very interesting area students are not interested in just sitting in the class and listening to the professor they will switch off so simply lecturing is you know an outdated way of transfer of knowledge the government of india has started a scheme called the unnat bharat abhiyan where nearby villages are adopted by higher educational institutions and efforts are made to solve the problem lots of villages have been adopted i think it delhi has adopted a number of villages in uh, nearby their areas so what are the issues of infrastructure any livelihoods sources of renewable energy uh, irrigation issues what are they facing our hisar agricultural university in haryana they have a, a very strong community outreach program where they interact with the farmers with the villages and they do uh you know experimentation recently they started a, a community biogas plant where uh, the paddy straw is used to make biogas and that is through pipe supply it is going to uh, the houses of the villagers so what economics it has what is the capital what is the technology all these aspects require expertise which is available in the university so let us try that these efforts do not remain only on paper but they are implemented and for that we have to make some effort how many of us do we know about the programs which have already been started by the government no this is a beautiful program we keep saying ke bhai we must have industry academic partnership yes we must have but the avenues are already there and have we utilized them or not that also we have to think and partnership is not only with the communities but it is also with other academic institutions in a number of academic institutions i have seen that faculty from one institution goes as a guest faculty to another institution and that goes across countries Uh, you have visiting faculty from different countries i have seen some uh, american and european uh, scholars and professors come here 
and share their knowledge and expertise for some period of time, maybe a month or two, including students, and they do joint research projects. So that's how transmigration of ideas occurs. And uh, also coupled with this is the fact that how much should we concentrate on the core subjects and how much should we go beyond the core subjects? So that is a choice based credit system. Do we give adequate choice to students that they can do whatever they want? We have started a choice based credit system where you can choose you know, other subjects and other areas, but that is to a limited extent. What we see in the West is that there is a, a very large amount of flexibility given to students in choosing their courses. At initial thought, you may think this is not relevant to what he's studying and this is a totally different area and therefore it is not relevant. But you never know what learnings can another course give to your own course. Let me give you one example. You would have heard of uh, Robert Merton. So Merton was a criminologist. He was doing his PhD at Harvard University. And he was looking for a topic that on which topic should I conduct my research? And as days passed into weeks and as weeks passed into months, naturally a PhD student in India, you have, when you do PhD, you have to submit a research topic. But in America, it is not like that. You just go into a PhD without submitting a topic and you have to uh, do the courses. So you do the courses for two years, three years then you appear for a comprehensive examination. When the comp is done in the third year usually, then you are eligible to take up a subject, uh, topic for research. And only then you can uh, constitute your research committee. So dissertation committee only after passing the comprehensive examination, generally happens in third year. So this Merton in Harvard, he was looking for a topic. He did not have one. So he asked his, uh, committee, what should we do? So, you know, that time yeah, you would have heard of Emil Durkheim. He had written a book on suicide uh, in, Fr in France. And of course, that was in French. And this person, Merton, he had taken a French course and he knew French. So the guy told him, you translate this book. So he, he says, yeah, now I am searching for a topic and my guide is just asking me to translate a book uh, just because I know French. And in any case, he started translating that. And while reading and thinking about that book, he had some ideas about suicide, the concept of anomie, norms, normlessness, basically. An anomie is what? Normlessness. So when you feel detached from the society, so that kind of uh, concepts are there in anomie. And from there, he, he picked up, he said, yes, this anomie, when a person is detached from a society, that can lead to some kind of criminal behavior. So his theory of anomie, he founded his theory of anomie and there he got his topic of research. Therefore, what I'm trying to say through this example is that we must encourage interdisciplinary studies. Cross-pollination of ideas. That is where from where we will get our next idea to work upon. If you are, have a tunnel vision, then you do not get all these different bright ideas. And it is, you know, it's also the way we think about issues. This is critical thinking. Let me give you an example about critical thinking. We have all uh, talked about critical thinking that we should be inculcating critical thinking. A book called uh, Novel Farewell to Arms was written by Ernest Hemingway in the 1930s. He got the Nobel Prize for Literature for it. It describes war, second, uh, in the World War, how the soldiers' lives are there and all it describes about that. Now, when he was writing the ending of the uh, book Farewell to Arms, he couldn't decide what way the novel should end. So he wrote many endings. In fact, he wrote 39 endings of the same novel. And all these endings 
are preserved in the national archives in the library in washington dc if you go there you can have a look at that so of course he consulted many friends and his family members on which ending should i use and he finally of course he chose one ending and that's what you see in the novel so this assignment is there in class 10 in the state of ohio in united states that what are these endings what would have happened if that ending was not chosen why he did not choose this ending why he chose that ending why was why were so many endings written how did the novel begin why not be, could he have begun with some other uh, scene of action what was the sequence of events why this event was not placed before the other that are the kind of questions which a class 10 student is being asked to discuss so you look at the mental capacity which is required so the students of class 10 or 9 they are stepping into the shoes of the author like us they are not just questions on plot what happened after this who was he why did he do this these are questions on the plot so now we have stepped into the shoes of the author that how the novel was structured you know once you do that kind of analysis probably you'll have some of your own ideas that if you are writing your own novel how should that novel be written that is critical thinking you are critiquing the way of writing of the author why he has written in that way and that's where your creative faculty comes into play so critical thinking has to be encouraged because one thing is to know something and second thing is to how to put it across you have the knowledge fine but how to put it across and there we come to the question of pedagogy what is pedagogy pedagogy is you know teaching children and androgogy androgogy is teaching adults most of our students in graduate classes which is a masters and uh, research classes they are adults they have a different learning style and children less than say 10 to 15 years have a different learning style therefore we have to think what are the teaching methods which can engage the students our attendance in classes is low why is it low i mean we are saying okay biometric attendance okay we are saying cctv cameras but what really keeps the student in classes is how much the professor is able to engage the students how much you get the student excited and they voluntarily come to your class so that's engagement and that has to be cultivated through of course there are n number of ways to cultivate uh, engagement but that's one area where we have to focus and also i think too much emphasis on the course contents is may not be called for why because the technology which are using today that will not be there tomorrow tomorrow there will be some new technology which is not get invented the students whom we are teaching 19 20 years old 22 23 years old are you sure that after 20 years this conference is on zoom will be we using even zoom after 20 years we do not know what kind of technologies will come i am remembered of one of my professors in jamia milia when we were doing btech uh, so he he used to teach us about this microprocessor named 8085 this 8085 microprocessor was made by intel company intel corporation 1972 and his mtech was in the late 60s 67 68 mein unki mtech thi so we used to ask him that sir you are teaching us 8085 it was made in 1972 you had done your mtech by 68 how do you know about 8085 you are telling us all the hardware and all the assembly language instructions so he said beta padh ke padhate hain so they read this and then they are telling us so what i'm saying is that the technology which is there of tomorrow students will have to you have to prepare them to be ready to receive that knowledge when it comes 
we have learned fortran in college but fortran is hardly used what we are using now is web based languages all the html and web based is used now those languages are long gone but it was not a waste the, the concepts of programming are the same the logic is the same the algorithmic uh, flow of information the flow chart which you make they are all the same therefore concepts are more important than the specific knowledge of the particular technology which you may be using so we must you know emphasize upon these resources availability of these resources to the students teacher is not the only way a student is learning knowledge earlier it used to be when you go to the class your teacher is the only resource but now the internet is there so e libraries you would have heard that the government of india has started the national e library mission where a large number of textbooks are provided there and now so making use of such resources and not only e books rather i would say that you know i met a student a couple of weeks back from the new york university and i asked him uh which book are you using so he says we do not have any book i said sir are you do not have any book then how do you learn so he says that there are web resources we have some videos we have some links we have some databases and you know there is no book and this is a concept of course we are from that generation our concept is that this is a sacred book ye hamari holy bible hai and we have to study from this cover to cover ratify it learn it so that concept is my dear friends wrong that concept is not there now so you as a teacher have to facilitate what kind of resources can you point the students towards youtube that's an excellent uh, mechanism over there you have large number of uh, websites which have come up you google anything and you'll get if not all then a lot of information about it. but you must know how to navigate the web it is a jungle out there only a seasoned person seasoned uh, faculty who knows where to find what he can make the path easier for the student what are the best resources to master the skill that you can share with him or her so that is how the information revolution has to succeed in our country information is there and as faculty we are the channel through which that information can go to the students then another uh, issue i think about is being exposed to different uh, learning styles different campuses different states different countries so variety is the spice of life right so if you look at a couple of different books couple of different ways to learn and then we are all god has made us all unique all of us have different learning styles unique learning styles some people just like to read books other others you know would like to listen listen to books audio books there are audio books now available you can just on the go listen to them there are some learn by doing uh, diy kind of projects some people are more comfortable with them and therefore the exposure to various methods of learning that is also an extremely important thing another thing which i thought about uh, the challenges of higher education were dealing with different stakeholders so uh, for instance when i was posted as ssp of a uh, few districts in haryana and we had to organize events or we had to even you know conduct routine investigations so a police officer when he conducts investigation he is not a scientist so he will not know the blood groups he will not know how to do a ballistic bullet analysis in case of a murder by a weapon he has to seek the help of forensic science lab fsl now the government of the supreme court has made dna analysis mandatory in all rape cases therefore dna analysis uh, is a must but a police officer does not know how to do a dna analysis so he must go to the forensic science lab he must interact with those people 
he must interact with the prosecuting lawyers regarding what are the common mistakes in an investigation then he must refer to the judgments of high court and supreme courts which tell you about how investigation should be conducted he must also interact with the citizens with the concerned people connected with the case how to do a proper and a fair investigation he must also uh, if you are a senior police officer then you have to interact with the media to tell the correct version what is the police working on you are answerable to the judiciary you are answerable to your political uh, bosses you are answerable to your own departmental seniors therefore all these stakeholders they have to be managed and that is the challenge i think a similar challenge exists for the higher education also because it is not just a matter of teaching students in your class it is a matter of your own departmental seniors the policy framework the social life in the campus your uh, parents of the students then you want a partnership with industry so industry is your stakeholder you want partnership with other academic institutions so they are your stakeholders you want to organize excursions and visits and cultural exchanges so those organizations are your uh, stakeholders so you have to be very uh, flexible in meeting them talking to them finding out how best you can make use how you can create synergy so creating that synergy is very important in especially higher educational institutions you know, because you want to be more connected to the society you don't want to be in an ivory tower and keep doing your research which is not relevant to people you want to integrate with the society you want to take from them and you want to give back to them and one place where i think uh, our nature of society hampers this is the hierarchical nature of our society we think ki bhai this guy is very senior this guy is very junior he he is a man he is a woman she is a woman and uh, egalitarian societies facilitate freer exchange of information in a hierarchical system you do not have there are impediments to flow of information therefore let us make our culture in a manner where merit is respected where openness is there where ease of uh, talking and ease of meeting is there that is the culture in which our uh, exchange of information that will flourish a lot uh we have uh, as far as the uh, department of renewable energy is concerned we have you know partnered with a number of institutions in haryana and we try to promote research into new technology that is one then we promote uh, some projects Uh, some workable projects so we have a project on electric vehicles if if, uh, if some students in college can develop some kind of maybe battery technology or maybe anything which can be used the government of india the bureau of energy efficiency with whom we partner they pro also provide funding for it so this academic and government participation and nowadays the government is giving a lot of funds for research and promotion of newer technologies i know about renewable energy because that's the area i work in but i'm sure that in most of the areas the uh, similar uh, uh, schemes and facilities exist so it would be best to uh, interact with aict and interact with the relevant departments from where you can get help and that will empower the students to work on the projects which they like uh i think it has been a, a wonderful time uh, interacting with uh, you all uh, and, and that is all uh, i have to say today uh, but i would welcome any comments any suggestions or any questions if you have and i would try to answer those questions thank you very much
so i have uh, chanchal i have completed uh, i have uh, said the things which i wanted to say and i was just wondering if uh, someone would like to ask any questions i would be happy to answer them sure sir thank you sir uh, my request to the audience uh, and the participant that if anybody is interested please uh, raise your hand so our it team can unmute you one by one to avoid the chaos Yeah, IT team is requested to unmute the interested participant. Uh, I think you may also use the chat box to ask any questions. Okay, uh, so. Yeah, so I can see one question from Nithun, sir. Can you please guide us how to guide students about renewable energy or resources for the welfare of all mankind? Yeah, so there are. Uh, of course, you can look at the Department of Renewable Energy in Haryana's website. There you will find a lot of information. You can also look at the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy (MNRE) Government of India website. उनके पास भी हैं और एक ब्यूरो ऑफ एनर्जी एफिशिएंसी है जिसके बारे में मैं बात कर रहा था तो देर आल्सो यू विल फाइंड लॉट ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन सो या देर आर लॉट ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट्स लॉट ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन एंड इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट स्कीम्स ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट एंड आल्सो अबाउट फंडिंग फंडिंग इंफॉर्मेशन इज आल्सो देयर सो यू विल फाइंड लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स ओवर देयर any other query from the uh, distinguished speaker please any participants who have any query i think sir your session has been so uh, self explanatory and including the detailed and description and analysis of action plans so yeah there is some something okay so i am asking for vocational training in school uh yes so schools can partner with us uh, i think you can uh, get in touch with our department and uh, we offer a uh, number of programs for this so ordinarily we only go in for awareness drives in schools uh, because school students may not be so aware about the research issues so that is for colleges schools we go in for awareness courses uh, regarding vocational training we have a, a skill development people are here with us so i think they are in a better position to answer these kind of uh, skills i think we have a number of programs uh, where uh, skill development is emphasized yeah thank you very much i think uh, yes sir sir shall i yes please uh, carry on yes sir sir uh, i am really thankful to you for sharing your real life experiences they are full of versatility and uh, varieties in uh, because of your experience in various position across the state as well as international level sir it is really inspiring that you have focused on the quality and the need of the research and research aptitude in specific sir you have acknowledged the challenges uh, of because of diversity but you have beautifully motivated and inspired uh, us for jaha jaha waha raha an administrative view of academic arena shared by sir must have helped the participants for the insight with different perspective that how administrative and academic uh, administration is viewed from an administrative angle and how the challenges they can be uh, addressed so sir indeed a transformational and creative thinking and experimenting 
is the need of R and as shared by sir that one can initiate the changes at micro level also, not to wait for micro happening, uh, macro happenings and macro changes. They, if there is, uh, if there is a feel that you need to bring the change for positive and development of the youth, it can be initiated at any level. Maybe we are faculty, maybe we are uh, professor, HODs. It can be initiated at any level. The basic objective as stressed by sir is to develop the positive environment for learning and creative thinking, including all the stakeholders. And uh, here to share that blessed to have personal guidance and blessings from sir always. I must share that sir being, uh, besides being an extraordinary law and order administrator, he has been very humble in guiding and mentoring also. So sir, I personally feel the student, the youth, which has been under your guidance in Gururam University and Jamia Amdart University must be lucky to have uh, you as their mentor and guide. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing uh, and uh, uh, sparing the time and agreeing with SVSU for, on this platform because we understand the kind of uh, responsibilities and a lot of workload you are having at your uh, multiple positions, you have additional charges. And we are really thankful, sir, that you have agreed to uh, be with us on this platform. Now, as a part of process, process, I would like to invite Professor Rishi Palji, Dean Capacity Building and convener of this national workshop to uh, uh, pay vote of thanks to our eminent speaker for today's session. Uh, Chanchal, may I, uh, in between, address one query which has come from Samir? Sir, sure, sir, sure. Uh, <laughs> So you are asking how should be the ideal governance in tier two cities to grow and develop like metro cities. Uh, you are talking about good student student governance. Uh, Samir, would you like to clarify your question a bit? I am not very clear about student governance. Uh, what exactly do you want to ask? Um, so the, the continuation of that question is in the second one as well. I wanted that to be addressed. Second question. One more question I've posted. Is it ideal governance in tier two cities? Yeah. To grow and no, no, like... For example, majority of our, we, we come from, uh, we come from a tier two city. We are working in tier two city right now in Karnataka. So, um, majority of the students after their grad or <laughs> probably after 12th, they want to jump up to metropolitan cities and study over there. How do a good governance where we can, our institute can retain our uh, tie to study students only to, uh, to our pieces, not, <clears throat> not uh, uh, leaving them to study <clears throat> in metropolitan cities? Um, what governance uh, action should be taken or what should be the steps that we need to adopt? Uh, thank you, Samir. Your question is a very important question. Uh, in fact, uh, it is of central importance. You see, this is where, when I was mentioning about the partnership between industry and partnership between civil society and the institutions comes into picture. When the knowledge gained by students or the techniques learned by students can be solved to address the local issues, that is when the students will be encouraged to stay in the localities where they are. So, for instance, uh, we have a problem of paddy straw burning in the state of Haryana. And we have asked the Hisar Agriculture University to conduct research. They have put students there, uh, research scholars, MSc agriculture students, who go to the farmers, talk to them, and also conduct research in their labs. So this is a local problem, which they are trying to solve. And that is how they get developed into the mesh of the society. If they go to New York or they go to London, they do not have these kind of problems. If the institution is able to link the student to the local issues, you may be having n number of problems in local cities. If there is a local solution can be found to those problems, I think that is a very big motivator, not only for the students, but also for the employers. Employers always want a local employee because then the transport and the accommodation costs are also low. So the challenge is only linking the skills learned by the students into uh, the local uh, industry issues. 
I think that, that is the challenge before the institutions, and that can be addressed. Thank you. I think. Uh, Are you essential now? Yes, sir. I think, uh, sir, uh, you have actually, you know, um, given a very wonderful solution. If it uh, actually implemented at each level, especially uh, at uh, village level, then uh, township, and then district level, that we start really uh, making the projects and including the community and bridge the gap between the students and the community and the science and technology, the advancement in technology. If we can bring this together. it can not only resolve the issues uh, which is raised by our one of the participant it, it can create an environment uh, which is more uh, which will develop more creative and innovative thinking sir thank you sir thank you so much now uh, if there is any queries please because ye kabhi kabhi hota hai ke इतने सीनियर ऑफिशियल्स हमें अवेलेबल होते हैं इस प्लेटफॉर्म पे इतना लंबा पीरियड गाइड करने के लिए सो इफ देर इज एनी क्यूरी फ्रॉम एनी पार्टिसिपेंट प्लीज और आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट प्रोफेसर ऋषिपाल जी प्रोफेसर ऋषिपाल जी कॉल करूंगा ऋषिपाल सर सर आई हैव वन आई आई नीड टू आई हैव अ पर्सनल लाइक आई थिंक व्हेन आई लिसन टू योर दिस वेरी इंस्पायरिंग टॉक सो वन थिंग दैट कम्स इनटू माय माइंड व्हिच यू हैव सेड दैट वी वी डोंट हैव टू वेट फॉर माइक्रो मैक्रो चेंजेस and we can initiate the small project so uh, if in case somebody wants to start uh, such kind of initiative with district administration uh, some faculty or some institute so how you perceive that uh, you know uh, at which department the person should interact with which is the right way because sometimes you know the people in academia they don't understand where to connect with administration for uh, different different projects so that will be a very uh, learning for us sir if uh, very helpful for us if you can guide us on that channel see i think uh, there are a number of ways to do it uh, the best place to connect is the adc is the additional deputy commissioner's office in the district because they are mostly concerned with the schemes of government and their implementation and they also do not deal with law and order issues and magistracy issues so they are not involved in all these vip meetings and so they are basically about schemes and programs which are used in rural areas and urban areas adc office is one place which in the country uh, every district has one adc office that is one way the other way is that you can connect to the relevant departments uh, of the state government and nowadays with uh, all departments being online there is always a way to connect with them if you just hit at contact us uh, then you can contact the department the names of officers and telephone numbers emails are there and once you connect with them the government in most states is very intent on not only raising awareness about the issues which they deal with but also with active partnership of the civil society members so uh, the best way is to connect with those departments and then talk about what kind of engagement uh, can be done uh, so i would encourage everyone to you know exercise this option that is how uh, synergy will be created that is how because you know in the government setting we are also looking after okay we have this research grant home to give uh, and the research the colleges are also looking after from where we can get this you know some integration project is there or something else is there so effort has to be made from both sides right thank you sir sir one one more i would like to utilize this time at maximum possible one more thing sir just uh, what what difference you find in the youth uh, years back 20 years back 
maximum faculty professor, associate professor, and the governance um, the, uh, positions, the people sitting or that they have uh, from they are from the youth, uh, which are used to represent 20, 30 years back, and the youth of today. So, how you will advise us to tackle these? You know, these challenges with the change in technology and uh, millenniums are different, sir. Yeah. Uh, I think the biggest change which is there is the change of technology. Uh, so today's youth are, of course, very tech savvy and they communicate not only with words, but they communicate with emojis and they communicate with a lot of social media. So. I think one of the important changes and things which the faculty has to note has to be to communicate in the way the students communicate. Earlier, it was only a lecture form. So you are speaking and students are listening. But now, communication is much more spread across the internet, across emails, across messages, across bulletin boards, and across a lot of various forms of communication. So I think it also empowers the faculty in a certain way. If the faculty uses these methods with which the students are comfortable, then they will be much more forthcoming in what they have to say. They may not be uh, willing to say much in the class, but probably they are already communicating using those channels. So you also come on those channels. Uh, one of the professors in Jami Milia started a Facebook page in the Department of Electrical Engineering, and he would ask the students that you just post a problem there. So students will post a problem on the Facebook page and he provides a solution on the Facebook page itself. And other students can also comment, hey, sir, this solution is not so good. I have a different solution. And it becomes a proper discussion, which is going on even beyond the class hours. So using the technology to, uh, to your aid, I think uh, that that's, uh, we can use technology to empower us, right? Right, right, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, I would like to request Professor Rishi Palji to pay a word of thanks on behalf of uh, Shri Vishwakarma University to emin uh, today's eminent uh, uh, speaker, Dr. Uh, Hanif Parishi. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chanchal, madam. Thank you. And uh, really, it is enlightening for me. I have heard and I have listened to a number of times at number of places, starting from very open kind of gathering to a very refined kind of deliverance. I have listened to uh, him to a uh, number of times and his deliverance and his sharing and uh, uh, sharing of experiences is always worth learning and enlightening for me. And uh, He's a very renowned, he's a very established administrator and not only administrator, his zeal to be part of the academia. And uh, I was thinking that uh, which administrator should be brought, who can justify both the role. And uh, the only name in my mind was uh, Sir. And uh, Sir, I express my heartfelt thanks for uh, sparing your time, even being so much busy, I know very well what different kind of assignments you are having. Even then you spared so much of time. I am really thankful to you. I am extending my heartfelt thanks on behalf of my university, my vice chancellor and my organizing team. And uh, we shall be giving uh, more troubles of that kind in future also. And we will expect that you will support us. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ishupal. Thank you, Chanchal. And thank you, all the participants. We had a good time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.